Hello everyone and welcome to EDUU 609 Seminar in Curriculum Design, Summer 2, 2014. I'm your instructor, Dr. Kimberly Green, and I'm thrilled to be teaching this course. Just a bit about me, then we'll talk expectations, then we'll look at the course itself. I'm originally from Iowa. I live now in Santa Monica. I have my EDD is from Pepperdine University. It's in Educational Technology and Leadership. Um, I have multiple credentials, a multiple subject credential and several single subject credentials, taught K-12, uh, taught undergrad, obviously now graduate, uh, also worked in the business world, uh, worked for Michael Milken, designed a lot of curriculum for his different online entities, worked for a lot of nonprofits. So curriculum design is something I truly love. I've designed at least a dozen different courses for Bramman, uh, as well as probably mm, four or five for Pepperdine University. I love curriculum design. That said, there's a lot in this course, but I promise you that everything here is meaningful and purposeful. There is no filler. Everything has a reason. I have only eight weeks to change your hands, your heart, and your mind where we're talking about curriculum design, and there's a lot. So when I tell you you need to engage across the week, not just leave it all for a Sunday, but a little bit on a Monday, a little bit on Tuesday, maybe you take Wednesday off, a little bit, okay? I'm not kidding. I walk that talk and I expect you to as well. From me, you can expect a couple of things. Number one, I am very present in the course. I read everything. I answer emails within 48 hours. If you send me an email and you don't get a response within 48 hours, it means I didn't get it. My iPhone is glued to my hip, seriously, for reals. If you've emailed me and you haven't gotten a response within 48 hours, it means I didn't get it. Please do resend. Don't take it personally, resend. Uh, my tone, uh, I tend to make a lot of jokes. I like to smile, I like to laugh. I'm not glib though. I take the work we do very seriously, but I try to find joy in the process. Even the sloggy stuff that I don't like, I try and find joy in it. So please do not misread my tone. I take our time, I take our work very seriously, but yeah, I do like to smile, laugh, and have a good time. I try and give you all as much feedback as possible, very, very timely, so you can use it. I walk the talk in this course. I will be very transparent. I'll call out things I do. I'll stop in the middle of something and say, now, why do you think I just did that? How does that relate to blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Uh, however, there's a bit of a fly in the ointment this term because I have a broken arm. Thank you, thank you. Isn't it lovely? Camouflage, the color of the season. Um, typing is not as easy as it was. This bad boy comes off July 31st, so come August 1st, boy, are you going to get a lot of feedback. <laughs> um, but until then, here's, I, I, I'm being completely honest with you here. I will give you as much feedback as I can. So please, what I can share with you, use it. I set aside Monday and Tuesday to do all my grading so you have feedback to work with going forward. But it's frustrating enough when I have two good hands, let alone only one to type with, when I have to give the same feedback multiple times because someone isn't reading. I, I use rubrics, I fill out the grade center. Please read all the feedback I give you. It is meaningful and purposeful. I would much rather be in a position where I could just give you tons and tons of feedback and not have to worry about a grade. But okay, I've been a student. I know we gotta have grades and some of us type A plus really appreciate them. But my focus is on giving you feedback. Monday, Tuesday, if it's going to be any later than Tuesday, I promise I will let you know. So with that said, let me say one thing I expect from you guys. I expect you to do your best. And to do your best means you're present and you're genuine. In our thread of discussions, your first post is due by the end of Wednesday, Wednesday night before you go to bed, okay? I, if it comes in at 11.59 and 49 seconds, 
please, please. The goal is for you to be able to engage in authentic discussion, conversation with your peers throughout the week. So the first post on the initial topic is due by the end of Wednesday, before you go to bed Wednesday night, which gives us the rest of the week to come back in, read what our peers have written, and respond and engage meaningfully so that we have the constructivist experience of being present in our own learning process and negotiating meaning. Yep, I really do off the talk. So with that said, let's go look at the course and then here's to a great term. Here we go. When we log in, we always land on announcements. Please always do take a moment to check because I post a lot of announcements. Uh, make sure you go through start here and then inside course information there are several documents you really must download uh, underneath the bio scrolling 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 uh, please be aware of the late work policy do download and go through the syllabus and of course the course at a glance this is our roadmap for the next eight weeks you will note that this course we have one live class meeting you must attend. It's toward the end of week two. There will be two different sessions. One will be on Saturday, July 12th in the morning. The other will be on Sunday, July 13th in the evening. Please sign up. There's a wiki sign up. Please sign up for which meeting you will attend. You must attend. Trust me, you don't want to do the makeup work. It is not fun far better. You are present. It is a discussion. It is an interactive meeting. Again, I walk the talk in this class and there's a lot. So please, 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 please make sure you can attend our meeting. The discussion board rubric, threaded chats, please download this and go through it. I take that particular aspect of the work, the threaded discussions, incredibly seriously. I am a social constructivist. If we take a quick look, you will notice that the first thing is frequency, yes, but after frequency, it's all about quality, the quality of your engagement. So yes, you are expected to make three solid posts a week, solid, meaty, they're full of content, they're full of inquiry, there's a reason to read them, no two word posts, oh yeah, me too, I agree, no way. Uh. No, those don't count. Three solid meaty posts throughout the week. Your first post is due by the end of Wednesday night, meaning before you go to bed Wednesday night. Look, let's get real. If you post it at 12.02 a.m. Thursday morning, not a problem. Go with the spirit of the law on this, okay? The point is constructivism, verbal, voigatsky. You need to be engaged in the use of language as a learning tool, negotiating meaning, constructing understanding through discussion, debate, inquiry, the use of language. Three different posts throughout the week. The first one is due by the end of Wednesday night, and then two more responses on separate days. What does that mean? Three days, guys. Plan on three different days. Now, three posts a week is the minimum. When we get really great, delicious discussions going, chewy, full of questions, oh my goodness, my brain's going to explode, there'll probably be a lot more because you'll actually be conversing with your peers across the week. But three juicy, meaty, chewy, can you tell I haven't had dinner, posts are the minimum. That is what is expected on different days. So you can be in a real conversation, not just a series of monologues quality the three postings work together to craft a body of work and look at this we are looking for two valid outside resources why because you can't design curriculum in a vacuum we are empowering people to go out and be productive members of society we can't pretend like society isn't a part of the world as we're discussing, conversing, talking, pull in news articles, videos, different stories, different artifacts, anything that you feel is relevant or 
piques your curiosity on the topics that we're focused on. You must bring in two valid outside sources. Now, valid means it's related to what we're discussing. It could be something posted by a group that you think is absolute baloney, but it's relevant to our conversation. It's valid for what we're discussing that week. All right, moving on. Two solid meaty posts. I need to see that you're actually reading and engaging with the work of your peers. Constructive vivism doesn't happen in a vacuum. <laughs> okay, please, relevant, not just great post. I agree. But wow, you know what? That was really interesting. I don't exactly agree with you and here's why, but engage. And finally, adding significantly, elevating the level of discourse. We want to be those people who live at the top of Bloom's taxonomy, right? We want to be engaging in a higher level critical thinking. We want a safe environment where we can say, that doesn't make sense, help me understand it, or I feel differently because, bring in your questions, focus on your inquiry. I am far more impressed by great questions that push us forward rather than someone who just keeps telling me over and over, well, in my classroom, I do this. Well, in my classroom, I do that. Well, that's awesome, but that doesn't really elevate the conversation. It just gives a status quo. Who wants to spend their summer doing status quo? Come on, guys. You're bringing your best self. Bring all of your best self, and I promise I will do the same. So those are our threaded discussions. Those are the expectations. Please, every single threaded discussion gets assessed by that rubric, and I will give you as much feedback as I can. Uh, we're still in course info, important dates and posts, uh, dates and points. Da, 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 da. Okay, a few more things in here absolutely worth taking a gander at, but I want to point out a couple things. First of all, recognize that in week four, you have a choice book activity. In this course, you will have three books. You have the Understanding by Design, you have the Blue Curriculum book, and then you have a book you get to choose. Either the Big Picture, the Sabertooth Curriculum, or Emergent Curriculum in the Primary Classroom. In general, I tend to recommend Sabretooth for high school teachers, uh, middle or high school teachers, big picture definitely for middle and usually upper elementary, sometimes high school. Uh, special ed teachers seem to really like the big picture as well. And emergent curriculum is for early childhood and early primary grades, but you have carte blanche, you can pick whichever one you want. Please go through this rubric and recognize this takes the place of what would be a midterm. This is not simply, you know, give a book report. There's a lot that goes into this because you're being asked to authentically synthesize all that you've learned up to this point and demonstrate your understanding through the creation of an artifact. All right, again, this is walking the talk. It'll make more sense in a couple of weeks. So in general, a week looks like this. We always start with our topics. Then we move down and look at the icon. This is important. Notice it's a folder. What we're focusing on that week, what we're actually doing, the assignments and activities are inside the assignments and activities folder. Ha, huh, look at that. Dates are always posted there. Bremen week begins on a Monday and ends on a Sunday. So in week one, these are the different things that we're working on. So let's go on in. Now there's always below that, there is optional resources. Please go through these. These are here for you. If you don't have time, at the very least, look at what's there and download what you can. Again, I only have eight weeks to change your heart your hands, and your brain. That's not a lot of time. So there's a lot here. And anything that's in the optional resources is still worthy of your time and attention, I promise. So let's go back in and see what a week actually looks like. We do use a lot of wikis in this course. I'll show you very quickly how to do that in case you're unfamiliar. 
but this is pretty much what you're going to see. Maybe a wiki activity or two. Here's a note on the choice books that's coming up. Be sure you get it. Our threaded discussion link. Again, every single week, mucho importanto. Remember, to earn the maximum points, you are required to make a minimum of three postings per discussion on three different days. Okay, there it is. Okay, so let's go in and take a look at the introductions wiki. You click view to enter. And wikis always take a moment to load, especially the very first time. Here we go. So in our introductions wiki, well, what are you asked? You're asked to give your name, your campus, and maybe post a picture if you're so inclined. It'd be a nice thing to do. How do you work in a wiki? All wikis basically work the same way. See the little edit button over in the upper right hand corner? You click on that. And you wait. Go get a cup of coffee. Okay. You get the toolbar. Toolbar is magic. We've gone from a static web page to basically a living word document. Look, I've got bold, italics, underlined. Uh. Down here, I can attach a link with a little chain. I can upload a file. I can insert a picture. Oh, I can insert a picture. Ha ha. So to type on the page, now that I've got my toolbar, I just click wherever I want to type. Boom. And I type. End of story. Well, what about adding a picture like I just did? All right, here's what you do. Put your cursor where you want to upload the picture. All right. I want to add my picture right there. And I go to, what was that icon? The one that looks like a tree, that looks like the picture of a tree? Insert an image. So I click. Now, this is a terrible interface. Image URL, it's okay. Look across from that, that little 1989 circa icon. That's your browse icon. Oh, this is so bad. But it is what it is. So image URL, go to the right, browse. Now I get something that looks more familiar. Choose my file. And I select a picture. Select my picture. And there we go. Don't worry about the size. You can always resize it. I'll show you how. Well, this one actually turned out to be pretty close to the right size, but usually when you upload a picture, it's huge. All you need to do is click on it. See, I click on it, and then in the corner, I can drag the corner down to resize it. Click on the picture, grab the corner, drag it down. Only drag the corner. If you drag one of the sides, the photo will end up being kind of misshapen, and you'll be very interesting looking. We don't need to keep that, so I'm not going to save it, but you get the right idea. Click on the picture, grab the corner, drag it down. You can do it over and over and over till it's the right size. Now, this last step is absolutely crucial. Just like you always have to click edit to get the toolbar to be able to work on the page, you always have to click save. There's the save and the save and exit button. If you do any work without saving it, it will not last. There is no shadow. There is no record if you don't click save. What I tend to do is if I'm only doing one thing, go in, save and exit, I'm done. If I'm doing multiple things, multiple steps, I will click save as I'm working. And then when I'm done, save and exit. Better safe than sorry. Save, save, save. When you're done, save and exit, and boom, there we are. I do want to point out that in week five, we have an activity where you will be meeting live with a partner. Now, you will self-select, usually in teams of two. Sometimes we have groups of three. If you want to do three, just email me. It's fine. But you will be working on a data presentation. All the information is in the shell. You'll be doing research, looking for relevant data and a piece of data that you think, eh, you know what, maybe this isn't so relevant or this could easily be misunderstood. You will put together a presentation and you will give that presentation live to your partner. You set the times 
And what you'll do is post, whether it's a PPT or if you do a Prezi, you'll post the URL inside a wiki. And then you will set a time and over the telephone, you'll download your partner's PowerPoint or go to that Prezi and you will take turns presenting your data presentations to each other live. Again, using the telephone, you don't have to worry about doing this online and you guys set the time but it will be a live presentation. The last thing I want to point out is that we have a blog, journal blog, in this course. Starting in week two, you have a topic for you to take the time to reflect upon and post on your own journal blog page. Journal because it's personal, it's reflective in nature. Blog because it is an open forum. You'll note the button is on the left and when you click in, it is a wiki. It's a wiki rather than something individualized only between you and the professor so that throughout the course, your peers can go in and read your posts and comment. Now, please, do not comment on anyone's actual journal blog page. At the bottom of every single wiki page, there is a space for comments. You put in a topic and then you post your actual comment. It's a comments section. The page, the single page, please only post on the one page. Don't be building out pages. This is a running, living artifact of your experience in the course your growth and understanding starting in week two until week eight. So you will have a topic starting in week two all the way through week eight. And as well, you will go and read the blog of another student and leave a meaningful comment. This is active reflective work. Again, do not post on another person's actual page. Use the comment section at the bottom, please. That's our course. I'm thrilled to be your professor and I look forward to a wonderful summer term. I'm an email away if you have any comments, questions, or chocolate you care to share. Thank you.